So in this video we will do we will do part zero zero of the elemental series and we'll be I'll I'll call this one um the element abyss. Um, yeah, and I might have a name for it. We'll see. Anyways. I had to take a break and go downstairs to do this, do, to do this one, funny enough, but in this series, what we're doing is help, uh, bringing awareness to what's already around you what's around you and what's already inside of you to help bring a bit better understanding of the element we're discussing to also give a zoomed in and zoomed out perspective of that element so that a more complete picture can be created now This will be related to my part zero video, my part 13 video, and my astral and abyss video, my twilight video. So it will be related to a few things. Definitely my part 13 and my part zero video. Now, we talked about the void. Now there's the abyss. Um, we talked about heaven or utopia. We also got dystopia, you know, so you can say you eat the food and then you shit out the food, you know. You drink the water, and then you piss out the urine. You piss in the toilet, and it ends in a, in a waste facility. Or in the earth, I don't know, depending on where you pee. But you know what I'm saying? It ends up in a waste facility. So you have the void, and then you have the abyss. No relation to Abyssinia. <laughs> no relation whatsoever. That was a term by the Arabs. That has nothing to do with us. But they're flipping things backwards. Utopia, and then you have dystopia, which is utopia backwards, you know what I'm saying? It's, or upside down. You have the cross, and then you have the cross upside down. You have Sheba, or Saba, and then you have the word Saba backwards, where you got abyss. So, it's like a perversion, you know what I'm saying? So, go back to my Satanism video if you want me to, if you want an explanation on that. My part one Satanism video is one of my first ones my first videos, but so if you have a butterfly, you have a moth. <laughs> if you have a squirrel or a chipmunk, you have a rat and a mouse. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If If you got if you got a lion, you got a hyena. If you got a dog, then you got a rabid dog. Like so if you got a cat, then you got one of those hairless cats. No bad. I'm just kidding. But anyways when it comes to you dystopia or the abyss Arcadia, Pandemonium, um, this is going into where things kind of, this is like the cancer cell, the, actually, how did I forget, I'm gonna call this one absolute zero, this one's part, this one's absolute zero, that's what this, um, this one is, so yeah, we're talking about absolute zero, because, and that's what this is. I don't know. I forgot that. 
absolute zero is the coldest temperature where the coldest temperature that life stops existing at so ice it slows all of the particles down it slows life down so it doesn't move you know but absolute zero basically is like no life exists in absolute zero it's like a mummification and cryogenic sleep that that deep freeze that deep sleep that sukiyomi you know what i'm saying that um you if you don't know what Tsukiyomi is, it's basically like being in the Matrix, that deep sleep of that average person who doesn't even know the Matrix exists. And I mean, like, really, for real, for real. Like, if you think about the movie The Matrix and you have the people walking around and they had no clue the movie that The Matrix existed. Everyone was in cryogenic sleep from the robots, right? That's absolute zero. So that's being inside of a being inside of something but not really just being inside of something but it's being trapped in a i don't even really want to call it a box it's like a quantum reality you can it's just being trapped in something with no almost no hope to escape because somehow neo made it out supposedly but um Absolute zero, right? It starts at negative 273 Kelvin. I mean, or degrees Celsius, which is zero degrees Kelvin. So when you talk about the abyss or the infernal realm or the hell, hell, this is literally hell. So if you had part 13, which was heaven, this would be hell. Hell is cold. It is not hot. Go watch the movie Legend. You'll see that when Satan gets... Adam and Eve to bite the apple which in that movie it's cutting off a unicorn horn which they'll say the unicorn horn is actually a magic wand the first magic wand um you know the whole thing about the Hollywood tree and all that shit what happens is the garden actually started it started snowing in the garden it became a cold garden and um it became a frozen garden actually which I also call the frozen wonderland um there's the movies, uh, there's the last Digimon movie, what is it called? Not Digimon Try. The, I don't know, the 2021 or the 2020 Digimon movie. It was like a frozen wonderland. They, they talked about the abyss in there. And uh, they showed in other animes and other shows. There's Dead Man Wonderland, that anime. It's really short. Uh, it's like 12 episodes or 13 episodes or something like that. They they show you what the abyss is like there. Um, yeah, it's in a bunch of stuff. But anyways. Absolute zero. Zero degrees Kelvin. Where nothing exists. Cryogenic sleep. Where you go across the waters. <laughs> um, no, no. It's not even across the waters. That's... Um, it, it's the space in between here and the waters not the astral it's the space in between not the astral realm but it's the space in between this and the waters the abyss realm the barian world so Yu-Gi-Oh Zexil that I was talking about you have the number cards and then you have the negative number cards were used by the barian which is a real like they, they use tachyon energy all that shit that's um yeah that's that's another there was eight barrier emperors right so that's going into the Ogduad and all that but, but this is the um realm in between this is like kind of like purgatory too but it's, but it's not really purgatory purgatory is way more tame <laughs> um you have to go to the abyss like beings from the abyss can't come here this is the tree of death as well, but be beings from the abyss can't come here. You can go to the abyss, which I don't know why you'd ever want to do that, but you can go there. Um, well, actually, I can understand, but but I mean, I I, I, but I don't I still don't see it. But um, like I can kind of understand, but I can't really like see it actually being worth it <laughs> in any kind of way. But um, 
yeah, the abyss is, um, here, let's just start here. Yeah, the number zero, right? Or the, or the circle. See, when the, I described a lot of the other videos, like part one and then part 11, part two, then part 22, part three, and part 33, so on and so forth, all the way to 99, right? And I always kind of explained it as like, okay, well, once it goes in inside of itself, once the number one goes inside of itself, once the number two goes inside of itself, it refines itself, it becomes. Now, with this one, it's not really going inside of itself. It's like separating from itself. It's kind of like cell division. See, this is kind of like you have a box and you can't see inside of the box, right? But instead of, how should I word this? <laughs> instead of like opening the box and just seeing what's inside of it, this is like you trying to clone the box and then opening the clone box to preserve the original one, if that makes sense. But, but it's more like, Actually, I'll put it like this. It's more like when you try to open the box, the box clones itself <laughs> and you open you open the old box, but, but the new box actually has the real contents inside of it. It's like leaving a clone behind for another f fool <laughs> to, to try to un... Uh, or uncautiously being poisoned but they were warned it said poison is inside or something like that it's like uh you see the zero or the circle and you can't you don't know what's inside of it so you poke at it see if you can poke a hole to to see inside of it you can't open it because it's a circle there's no door so you squeeze it and it becomes an oval you know the reason why it becomes an oval is because if you have two circles, right, and you put them on top of each other and you get that Vesica Pisces or the Venn diagram, right, what gets formed between the two circles? An oval in between the two. That That's like a shared space. It can also be kind of looked at as an hourglass on one level, but it's, a, it's related to the number eight um, on the ne negative side of it. And not negative number, I mean like you can draw a number eight around the boundary, the outside of the oval. But when you put the two zeros together, you get a, um, you get an oval that gets formed inside of the middle. That oval is what we're talking about. That's part zero, zero. See, it might look like two zeros. It might look like they're connected. Like it's a chain that it's two zeros connected, but it's more like make, make, a, make a number zero with one hand, right? Make another zero with the other hand. Now put it together so you get a Venn diagram. And you'll see that there is an oval that gets formed in the middle, right? But your fingers aren't interlocked. See, you can lift one hand away from the other and it's two separate circles that are stacked on top of each other. So imagine you keep separating your hands and there's a giant space in between your two, the two circles, your two hands. Now that giant space is what the abyss becomes. <laughs> it's that thing that separates the two, but it might be, um, um, yeah. So, so the the one space that's separating itself from the from the other is basically what you call heaven, because it it's like a butterfly leaving its cocoon. The old space is where the beings are left behind in hell, and then the whole space in between is. Um, different levels of the abyss where um, it's like different levels of jail, <laughs> if that makes sense. So the bottom level would be like maximum security, but everything in between would just be like levels, if that makes sense. So that's kind of how this works. Now let's talk about ovals. <laughs> now, if you ever watch figure skating or played hockey, you'll know that you're in an oval rink when you walk or not figure skaters i mean speed skaters i'm talking about um but hockey people who play hockey if you look at the shape of the arena it's an oval if you look at the shape of a football stadium it's an oval like all of these places are ovals the only ones that aren't really 
they're all ovals. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You eat discus, you use a you use a circular disc, but other but you're still everything is an oval. You know what I'm saying? If you look at um, well, I'll get that. In, I'll get into it in a second. So if you see speed skaters sp skating around a rink, they'll they'll have their arms behind their back. They're bent over, looking like a ninja running or some shit from Naruto. <laughs> but they'll be bent over, um, skating right, and they'll be pushing. They'll be pushing. They'll be pushing on the outsides. So the outsides of the oval are the long parts, right? But then when they're turning on the short parts of the oval, that's when they're leaning and they're not pushing anymore. They're just leaning and um, maintaining speed. Um, and honestly, if you ever played hockey or you skated and you skated fast, um, you definitely pick up speed on the sides. But, but when you're turning, it feels like you're using the momentum to even speed you up even more. It'd be, it's a crazy feeling. It's like a whip effect, like a, like a boomerang. But like that, when the boomerang turns, it feels like, I don't know how to explain it. When you throw the boomerang, when you, when the boomerang turns and it's coming back at you, doesn't it feel like it's coming back even faster than when you threw it? Because <laughs> when, when you'd be turning on that rink, it's almost like you're getting whipped, whipped around. If you've seen in like a NASCAR and like, you know, when they do that, when they be trailing behind a car and they t make those turns and those turns are super dangerous, it's like... The, it's like a whiplash effect that allows you to just somehow pick up acceleration along that momentum. So, I don't know, it's kind of cool just to think about, but, um, so we'll go back into that in a second. Now, actually, yeah, no, let's continue. So the oval, this deals with, um, we'll talk about this later, but this deals with sustainability as well. So this deals with, um, See, you can't have heaven without hell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How can you be stepping forward if you if there isn't a backwards? How can you be going up if there isn't a down? See, you can't have heaven without hell. And it's not saying like hell is functions as like kind of like how in America how the prison system is. Not, not like that where it's like um, dysfunctional, like a dysfunctional system. It's not like that. You can't have... And it's funny, when I <laughs> looked up pictures of heaven um, for the thumbnail for the last video, it kept showing that whole stairway to a bright light. So that is not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about heaven. That's just the Palladian recyc soul recycling. That, that's not what I'm talking about. That's some other shit. So don't go into the light. So that's not what I'm talking about. I need to make that disclaimer for the heaven video. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways, the you you can't have heaven without hell. That's just how it works. Otherwise, it's not heaven. Why would the kingdom of God have to be on earth when all this shit ends? Because there probably won't be a heaven or a hell. It'll just be an earth. <laughs> and not earth as in Terra, like the Pleiadian shit. Um, it'll just be a Elium or whatever you want to call this. It probably has a new name now. You know, that's an old name. It'll probably have a new name. So, um, yeah, it deals with momentum, the oval. So the abyss is how should I put this it's also kind of a pivotal point where, where things change direction but it's mainly like a it deals with cloning heavily it deals with you might have two people that are clones of one another but one of them has the soul kind of like the movie Us they were like fighting over one soul, you know, the two, uh, the, un the people from the underground and then like the real people above ground or whichever one was real, the clones and the non-clones, they were like fighting over a soul, right? So you have supposedly 72 demons and then 72 angels, but would you not think that they're just kind of two halves of one coin? 
and not just on some shit where you have black and white and now you have gray not some gray shit um because that's some other shit that's not what i'm talking about but um and that's in their system that's the goetic system so that's their system so that's some alistair crowley shit to be honest but still do you, do you see the point in that though um it doesn't mean no oh, you can just do good you do bad like you always want to be improving like you know what i'm saying it's not that you hate your the thing you hate you hate like if you lived a different lifestyle or you're um you make different changes in life it's not like you hate that old side of yourself or you know what i'm saying it's nothing like that it's more like um you know how to accept yourself and um accept the choices you make at any given moment and you know how to move forward because when it comes to absolute zero time completely freezes so if you get to a point where you can't accept change in any kind of way everything will be stuck frozen and at that point it's like um it's a form of immortality but it's not and it's not lunar immortality so it's not vampiristic but it's not um it, it gets boring like not just boring it gets unsatisfying because you're technically not alive anymore like your blood is frozen um it's not that your blood doesn't work like on some vampire shit but it's just your your it's like you're in cryogenic sleep like it's like you're asleep but if you if you ever if you know about cryogenic sleep you don't dream in cryogenic sleep because anytime you dream you're imagining and then you're creating and you're growing it's too deep you know what i'm saying like you're too deep in it's like the matrix you know what i'm saying like everybody there was like living their nine to five and they're some of them might have been comfortable but there was no growth now supercomputers robots the d-wave computer quantum computers um especially quantum computers um high level robots and stuff like that they function at extremely high temperatures so they they need their computing system or sorry they they function they, they, they produce extremely high temperatures, so they need to function at low temperatures. Usually they'll use things like superconductors, like um, like liquid nitrogen and like liquid metals and stuff like that, that are negative 200 below degrees, you know what I'm saying? Because they need these type of things to um, keep their system cool so that they can pro um, operate at extremely high levels. Now... So that's tied to robots, you know what I'm saying? Extremely t cold temperatures. But at the same time, if you understand superconductors and what was happening in ancient Egypt and like um, some of the god science and all that type of stuff, your body also operates with um, some superconductive qualities to keep yourself uh, cool. Because if you're too hot, you just degrade and die. You just like burn out. So you need certain superconductive qualities to keep yourself running at an if um, maximum efficiency oh that's creepy sorry i just kind of i might have saw something but anyways um and not on some spooky shit like i mean i mean like a mouse or something i don't know if i, I don't know who knows We'll find out. <laughs> um, yeah, your body needs to function at um, with some superconductive quality so that it operates at 100% efficiency or close to it so that um, you can maintain that immortal state, but not that immortal state, like that vampiristic or that evil type of, like the wicked immortal type of shit. Like I'm talking about... Um, because you know if if your soul is eternal and then the he kingdom of heaven's on earth and i don't mean this world that we're in currently but like the kingdom that's coming whatever the fuck you want to call it that um and 
and you create that. So remember, you create that. So you don't have to wait for something you created. But um, that means you're supposed to also be living eternal because if Christ is the redemption of Adam, and this is just for all the biblical people, then he's supposed to fix that first sin that made people age and all that shit too. So that's just for you to get a grip of eventually and take responsibility in this lifetime. <laughs> now, if you watch my last video, the part 13 video, then it's going to be kind of important here and my part zero video, but how should I put this? This would be like, uh, imagine you have a, um, how should I put this? This would be like, let's say you master something, right? After you master something, a lot of times the next thing that you're going to want to do is automate it. So if you're good at making, like, let's say you're always good at making clothing or making food or you're good at like laundry, I don't know. And you're every day you're rinsing your, this or every week or whatever however often you're rinsing the clothing in the river and you're washing the clothing in the river and you know what i'm saying eventually you're gonna figure out okay i don't need to do it like this every time there's probably a better way for me to do this and yeah then you might discover a better way to do a laundry instead of going to a river you know what i'm saying now once you automate that, let's say the laundry machine is the better way to do that, right? Which I'm not saying that even is a better way because I actually don't even really think that, but um, I'm just kind of giving an example for most people to understand. So now that washing machine acts as like your clone. It's like a soulless copy of you that can do the job that you don't need to do anymore. So this is the reason why we even have like a elite and a cast, well, not really, kind of. This is, uh, I'll get into that in a second. This is kind of the reason we have like a caste system and like a high class and a low class and all that type of stuff because the real thing was you're supposed to be able to grow and move past different levels and um, so on. But it became a thing where people used others and put them into situations that they can't get out of so that they have like a perpetual slavery system which is not at all how this is supposed to go well how, how it's supposed to run and not only that but there might really be a mouse in here I keep sensing it <laughs> He's tripping me out. I keep sensing it. Um, yeah, so... If, if you're good at doing something, let's say, and then not just you're good at it, but, like, you don't need to be doing that anymore because you've mastered it, you know what I'm saying? It's almost like if you left a clone behind to do your job. Not like a slave or something, but, like, you left, like, a clone of yourself to do that job. And then you went and did something else. So it's like you're able to leave us because if you really think about it, right, let's say you suck at cooking and it takes you like three hours to make a meal, like a real meal. And then eventually you get good at it and it takes you like 15 minutes to do it, right? So because you have the technique, you have a programmable way to do it, it's like it takes you a lot less energy and a lot less time to do it. 
Now, if you're able to have another version of yourself, kind of just spend 15, 30 minutes making that same thing and you don't even have to spend any time on it. Like this is goes even to my spiritual warfare on Anaki versus Neturu video about the whole thing about what, what the Anunnaki um, did to stunt their own evolution, just consistently trying to get better at evolving and shit, but, um, and then disconnect themselves from nature, but, but yeah, that's basically what this is, it's like, a, a zero and another zero, and they basically, one clones itself, so the soul is in another body doing something else, and then the old one is there doing its old habits and routines that it needs to do to function and then there's a middle point that oval where they overlap where the um the one is doing whatever and then it's it overlaps into the it overlaps into the other one and then the other one is doing whatever it does and then it overlaps into the other so example in that movie us they they were both living their own lives one above ground one above one underground which were which was terrible don't get me wrong but but um they were doing that and then it was a one period in time where their lives overlapped you know it was one period in time where their lives overlapped um you have angels doing whatever they're doing and then you have demons doing whatever they're doing and then revelations end time Supposedly, that's when that they, they overlapped. You know what I'm saying? That one time period. So that overlap point, which is um, the side, it's um, that would be the um, in the speed skating example. That wouldn't be the turn. That would be the two points where, um, the two sides of the arena where the skater is pushing and skating, right? That's where they would, um, have slight overlap. That point is, um, how should I word it? Easiest way to put it is that point is when um, that's that's just when the machine is functioning. That's the best way I can word it because if you really think about even in biblically when it says the first three and a half um the first half of the seals the demons rule and the second half the angels rule the first half would be one side of that oval the second half would be the other side of that oval so one side would be okay my, i'm right-handed so the second hand would be left-handed like one side would be i'm pushing hard the second side it would be like my opponent is um a little bit ahead of me you know what I'm saying like it's it's kind of like that struggle between the two that's kind of that um, how that how that how that functions it's kind of really hard to put that into um, a detailed explanation but it's kind of like um, for absolute zero it would be like attack and then defense it's kind of binary in a sense but it'd be more like um, you had Neo when he was asleep in the Matrix, and then you had Neo when he was um, destroying the Matrix. Not even like waking up, but like destroying the Matrix. It'd be asleep and then destroy. So basically being destroyed and then being the destroyer. Um, the demons ruling and then, then the angels ruling, you know what I'm saying? So the robots um, destroying him and then him destroying the robots. It would be like... Uh, 
the villains are doing whatever they're doing for the majority of the movie and they're doing their thing and the good guy is usually on some kind of quest but at the same time he's not doing as well then it'd be like the hero is um defeating the enemy you know what i'm saying it's kind of like how the two overlap but um so like i said you can't really have a heaven without a hell but it doesn't mean the two are directly interacting with each other the way that the two are interacting with each other is that middle oval. So that middle oval would be kind of like Earth in this sense. It's that in see. It's also that in between. It's also that part that's in between the realms, but it, but it's also Earth in this sense because Earth is the like you don't have demons in heaven. You do probably have angels in hell to. Um, like you do have that, but you don't have demons in heaven. So the overlap place is Earth and kind of hell to an extent. But um, because, like I said, it's like if you have a cell dividing, one is a clone of the other. So heaven or hell would have been the old heaven. That's the best way. That's the easiest way I can word it. Hell would have been the old heaven. Um, if you think about like an apocalyptic situation, right? Let's say people are robbing stores, people are um, looting houses, right? You might live in your house. You might have built that house. You might have renovated that house. You made that house dope as fuck, you know what I'm saying? But in an apocalyptic situation, you might not be there anymore, and then someone else is living in your house. So one was heaven, one was hell, you know what I'm saying? But it's the same spot. It's the same place. The demons try to take over heaven. You might let them <laughs> and then just go build heaven somewhere else because um anytime you know you know what poison is right if you attack an animal that's poisonous see venom is like a snake biting you and then you getting um, paralyzed poison is like you biting a frog and then you getting paralyzed from biting the frog Poison is more defense. Venom is more offense. Like, it goes a little bit deeper than that. But, but generally, that's what it is. So, poison is like, you take over my spot, and you think you're going to be in heaven, but you're actually just going to be in hell again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, that's kind of how this whole thing is working. So, demons go up to heaven, supposedly, and then... Um, and it's funny because it says the principalities and all that uh, rule in high places. So it says the demons rule in high places. That's an interesting thing. So people think heaven is up and hell is low. But I don't know. It's a whole confusing thing to get into. You just got to read it carefully. But either way, demons get into heaven. But you can't get into heaven because it's not an external place. It's more... It is, but it's st like, but it, but it's something internally that you create. So, if you can't create it internally, you can never be there. Because to go there, you don't go through an external locate like you, you go through an internal location to get there, and then you can go through an external gate. But I mean, like you go through an internal locate, you go through an internal portal to get there. So you can't, um, so for example, if you had those two circles and they were separated from each other, right, very far apart, you don't just leave one circle and then get to it by, get to heaven by leaving it, flying away, and then getting to the other circle. You would get there by going inside of the circle that you're already at, through the center of it. You know, like if you take a piss in the toilet, the piss goes down the center of the toilet like it's a vortex that flushes through the center to pull it down. But the piss isn't trying to go back into your body. Like it goes, gets flushed. And then, who knows, maybe the water you're drinking was your ancient piss. <laughs> so that, um, but recycled. But it's been completely recycled and purified. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. It has to go through the process. Um... Yeah, heaven and heaven and hell is a very complicated topic. 
um, yeah, the abyss that, and then <laughs> let's just talk about it on a very plain level. So obviously this is dealing with the wicked and more like the Archon side of things and um, the messed up artificial intelligence and the Saturn cube and like all that extra shit. Yeah, like it's talking about all that shit too. Like don't get me wrong, it is. But I'm talking about where that shit even comes from because it's not like that computer shit wasn't bad at the beginning you know what i'm saying the ai system and we're not talking about recent ai we're talking about like some ancient stuff that stuff wasn't bad in the beginning none of that stuff was bad in the beginning but there's always a process right so there's always like the wheat gets shepherd separated from the weeds you know what i'm saying or the chaff or whatever you call it it's always like um the good get picked out of the bad but it's the same tree you know what I'm saying? So, when that happens, you have the good apple or the good fruit. No matter where that fruit goes, it's going to plant a good seed. But wherever that, even if that bad tr apple stays with the tree, and like now there's a bunch of bad apple trees around that other tree like the bad apple is always going to produce a bad seed so it's not about the location of heaven because it's about the contents of it because the people who create it if they're good they can create it again but the ones who are bad just to keep it simple or malefic or whatever word you want to use they will create um it's a bad seed so it'll create a bad fruit even in a good even in good soil you know so even if they're in heaven they'll just turn it into hell so it doesn't even matter um whether they get into heaven or not as long as the the people of heaven go and create some other shit they just don't lose sight of um what they are and i talked about that my cultural continuity continuity however you pronounce the word um cultural continuation <laughs> uh video cultural continuity oh man i can't get that right okay anyways continuity <laughs> cultural continuity <laughs> i think that's how you say it so in that video i talked about this if you are a um, I always use Swedish as an example. I don't know why. Um, not gonna be an exact, but good example. If you watched um that Thor movie, and Asgard was destroyed, it was Asgard wasn't the land of Asgard. Wherever the Asgardian people went would be Asgard because the land is the land. They made it Asgard by being there, and that's what I mean wherever you are you make that your land i don't mean through terraforming i don't mean you terraform the place like you make it livable for yourself yeah or you adapt to the location which would be better but that would be way better but um but wherever you go is you you bring you bring what you are there and then in the new place that you go to because this is the good part when the demons get your junk and they and they're trying to make sense of your junk and reverse engineer your life right and they're trying to be you they're being trying to be your shadow you go to a new place that you've never been and you get a whole new experience so heaven isn't just some place of stagnation where you just sit on a gold throne all day you know what I'm saying? It's not... <laughs> it's not that. The abyss is more so someone sitting on a gold throne. Someone sitting, like, all day and just living in some pearly white... You know what I'm saying? Like, on a gold flying carpet <laughs> being pulled by diamond horses and shit. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
that is um I'm not saying that you can't have that but it's just how you get it like it's not the the people and the beings that usually have that are the ones that just stole it you know what I'm saying that's not how usually you have the dwarves in Lord of the Rings and then you have the dragon that was living in the castle who stole all the shit <laughs> so um a Satan who looks like the most beautiful thing and you know what I'm saying all that type of shit and then funny because then they make Christ look like that blonde hair white dude they try to make him look as some weird attractive homeless I don't know they, they try to I don't know they make him look like some weirdo dude um and pause don't think I'm saying it's attractive but like that's what they're trying to do with the imagery um yeah so meanwhile they make demons look like all these grotesque disgusting things but it doesn't even describe demons like that you know what i'm saying so the imagery be off with with the description um yeah so no i know we produce ha gold actually you know i'm not gonna take it there but so the abyss absolute zero because demons exist in the cold because they don't produce any more life force so they gotta really just maintain what they got but because they're not living any more life right when you're living life and having new experiences you produce more life force but since they're not doing that anymore they have to hold on to what they got with that absolute zero energy that ice energy which is i mean you can use it here and there but eventually not the vampire shit, I'm not talking about that, but, um, but yeah, if that's your main sustain, if that's how you sustain yourself, though, because every element, I think we should use every element, that's just how it is, but if that's how you sustain yourself, unless it's one of these angels that are in the abyss to rule over these demons and shit, like, if you want to put it like that, um, so they can sustain themselves off of that shit but I mean other than that because they have a purpose to why they're doing that but other than that um yeah that's just some parasite shit or not even parasite shit that's just some um because it's not really parasitical that's some um it's actually not parasitical but that's more some well it is in a sense because they're living in the carcass of another being but it's more so like um It's just like on it's unauthentic. Cause like a god will create, but a um a savage will steal, you know what I'm saying? So some savage shit, you know what I'm saying? Now what else can I say about the abyss? Um it's bleak, it's stark cold it is unsustaining of life um in that space you can it becomes that because by staying in that space it becomes parasitical so it's not parasitical like um it's not parasitical like off it's um it's not originally parasitical, but it becomes parasitical based off of, um, because like I said, it's heaven, but then it's basically demons like that live in old heaven, so it becomes parasitical once it takes on the nature of the beings that are living there, if that makes sense. Now... And that's how it becomes cold, bleak, and stark, and all that type of shit. But, but even just once those beings start living there, because that's their nature. That's that that's what the that's what the energy of that place becomes, regardless of how it looks on the outside. Um, it does not smell like sulfur. 
of sulfur actually allows you to produce more blood, which is the opposite of this, so it does not smell like sulfur. Um, I'll emphasize again, it's cold. <laughs> it's very cold. Um, very hateful. Um, it's seemingly free. On the surface, it seems liberal or very free. But in actuality, there's a lot of boundaries. There's a lot of boundaries, like in every way, there's boundaries everywhere with everything, if that makes sense. Like it seems like it's free, but it's almost like, a, it's kind of like how liberal, with liberalism and Democrats and stuff, it seems like freedom, but then there is all the political correctness of all these different boundaries that you just unknowingly trip over. <laughs> so it seems free, but it's actually just a lot more bondage um, than it appears. It's deceptive. So at first it's deceptive. At best, it's deceptive. At worst, it's just pure evil. But at best, it's deceptive and seemingly beautiful. It's like plastic. So it's very... Um, see, you might... This is the one thing. People will look over this. But it's very unorganic and plastic-like. But people look over it because it's so attractive that they don't notice how unhuman it is. It's very sheep-like mentality. Um, unauthentic, like I said. So it's a lot of survival of the fittest because once someone comes up with something that's good, they'll basically try to kill and take that from from that person and make it their own so it's basically like um and then there's no ability to share or anything like that so it's it's just like if you got it then i would take it and then if you got it and you don't show other people that you got it um that's like really the way to make it because you have to use heaven heavenly uh tactics in there to even um survive in a good way but if you want to survive the bad way which is the appropriate way there you have to just go straight savage mode um yeah fear is usually something that takes over through doubt and hopelessness um, yeah, but, but the beings that overcome all that shit, <laughs> so that, that's just like the bad stuff about it, but I can go on about that for a long time, but, um, but the beings that overcome that stuff and they know how to work with the element effectively, basically become very strong minded, very self determined, um, strong, extremely strong willed. Um, they walk a fine line of, um, or they can be also very, uh, uh, understanding of other people's plights, but they walk a fine line also of, um, becoming too selfless, selfless, or even becoming too selfish becoming too caring or too uncaring like they walk like a fine line of extremes it's a very extreme place like of extreme natures there's not much balance and stuff but it's extreme natures it's like hot hot desert cold desert you know what i'm saying extreme natures it's absolute zero so it's just cold but 
um, but extreme extremes in general is cold in general. Um, yeah, so. Like I said, it's unhumanly, it's like very inorganic, but plastic. So it's seemingly beautiful and perfect on all levels, but it's really fucked up. <laughs> um, and the deeper it gets, the worse it is. Um, in the presence of heaven, if that makes sense, it that's when it tries to appear even better than heaven. But when heaven is nowhere to be found, it it just is what it is, and it becomes terrible, absolutely terrible. Um, but like I said, for the beings that overcome that shit, they become very strong-minded, strong-willed, um, very powerful, very complete. Also, like complete as a being, because that's something. Without that, you just become... See, without that understanding, you kind of just become mindless. That's the only thing that um, is extremely annoying about this whole situation. People who are too scared to um, deal with the shadow nature, dark nature, and like all that other type of stuff, the abyss side of it, all this stuff, they become very mindless, and they become good followers, and they become disciplined, but they become very... Um, they can't lead themselves so because they never really faced that abyss they don't know how to accuse their pineal gland calcified like to to an extent so it keeps their pineal gland on absolute zero on deep freeze so uh, you have to kind of face it to even know how to consistently battle it because unless you face it then you can't confront it or battle it um and this is definitely something that should be battled so and it's not something external it's an internal thing so if you're always looking at people's like always complaining about shit and just the situation at hand i guarantee you that that person has a very deep dark side that they um, have never had to confront. That's the easiest way I can word it. And like it's easier to trust someone who's been in a see if you if you have two people that you're friends with, right? And one of the friends that you've been into you've been in very tough circumstances and bad situations with, right? You're going to be able to trust them because you know what they're going to do in a in a messed up situation. But if you have another person who's always acting proper, but then if you're in a bad situation with them, like they're nowhere to be found, that person, you got to be worried because they almost don't know what they'll do in a situation like that. So they might completely overreact in situations they don't need to be doing things in. And yeah, they could be a very dangerous person to them and the, themselves and to the people around them so that's that's another thing but people can get so caught up into that abyss realm that they just become evil so that's an issue and then they think like one day if they just apologize it'll be cool but like that's idiotic because people if you choose to be there all the time like that's just kind of retarded Um, I can't understand on some levels um, how people can get caught up into it but I mean um, yeah at that point then they kind of um, like I said walk, people dealing with that stuff walk a fine line and at that point they cross a line that um that they probably can't fix with other people. 
at a certain point. And they kind of just expect things like forgiveness and all this extra shit. But then they're also extremely unforgiving people. So it's like, that's not gonna... Um, they, they mess up their... A lot of people mess up their karma down there. Um, and not people who are forced to be there. and But like, there's people who are there who are... Who have good karma. Like, it's kind of confusing, but... Um, but yeah, anyways. So... Yeah, so there could be some people who have good karma down there. I don't mean, like, one day you wake up in hell and you have good karma and you woke up there. I mean, people can go there willingly, but then they can mess up their karma from being there, um, from the choices they make. So, yeah, that's why it's extremely important to be very aware of all your, all the aspects of yourself and not just be like, oh, my higher self, my higher self. Well, you have a lower self. You have your, you have your, you have you, like you have a lower self, you have your higher self, like you have, you're one being, you know what I'm saying? And people who are only just them and higher, I don't know, that's kind of, um, like if you've been through shit and you've overcome it and like that, that's something. But I mean, people who are always just extremely judgmental of everybody, different races, different religions, different, um, just different just different things going on and then they're also very like they just hate the world like I understand there's a lot of bad shit but clearly you see a person is very it's kind of like that sheep thing I was talking about it's hard for them to create the reality that they want to live in even if we're in a messed up situation like you still have the ability to do things you know what I'm saying you're not just a rock that got dropped that you're not just like a boulder that got dropped in the space and you can have no feet to walk and go somewhere else or do something else. You know what I'm saying? Like you have, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is kind of like if you took a shit and then you're looking at the toilet and you're complaining that the shit was just sitting there and you just never flushed it. I don't know, like, it, and then and then it starts smelling bad in the, in, in the room or whatever. And then you're complaining even more. And it's like, bro, just flush it and turn on the fan and leave. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> this, this is what I'm talking about. It's, um, if you chose to be there, like, I don't know, um, you're a plumber and there's a clogged toilet and the plumber <laughs> it's a crazy analogy but um the plumber is unclogging the toilet i don't know maybe you took a precaution you wore a mask or i don't know you did something so and not because of the situation we're in right now but i mean he wore a mask because of he didn't want to smell that shit or whatever i don't know and he's plumbing the toilet i mean he chose to be there you know what i'm saying and he he he's dealing with it but but if you don't want to be there, just just dip out. And I don't mean some, don't think I'm talking about like suicide or something like that. I just mean make your life better. <laughs> I'm not talking about some shit like that. I just mean make your life better. So that's the thing that the abyss kind of offers. Um, and I don't mean like it's offering you money and shit like that. I mean, I mean the whole situation, regardless of where you're at with it. It's the because I told you supercomputers, all these things, they operate at absolute zero, so they can operate at 100% efficiency. It's a situation so that you're able to um, not separate your good and bad side, and you leave behind like you're always. Um, it's a situation so you can operate at 100% efficiency, and it doesn't also mean that you're now half bad, half good, and and. And good and evil are just perspective to you and all that stupid shit. It's not that either. It's more like um, you keep progressing forward. You know what I'm saying? You don't. You might not necessarily do all the things that you did before in the past, but but you're not frozen in moments. Like you're not stuck in. Um, you're not. You're not trying to preserve something. Um, based off of just like reciting it like you actually understand what something is on it on an inner level right and 
and if you truly understand what something is on an inner level, you're going to be able to always create it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you have an apple, you're not going to just try to save that one apple for your entire life. You eat the apple, and you plant the seed, and then you get a tree, and then you get a bunch of apples, and you plant more trees other places and shit like that. So what I'm getting at is, you don't just try to survive off the apple forever. Like You need to just understand what that, like, maybe if you never knew what an apple was, or, or I mean, not an apple, if you never knew what a seed was, and the fact that it actually grows trees, I can understand maybe, but like, but if you're buying an apple, and then you can grow the tree in your backyard, and then you just keep going to the store and buying apples forever, it's like, bro, just grow a tree, and then try another fruit, like, goddamn. <laughs> so, that's kind of this whole situation with the abyss thing. It's it was absolute zero. It's kind of like um, just just being I just call it the frozen wonderland, the Alice in Wonderland situation, the frozen paradise. Actually, I I more call it the frozen paradise, not really wonderland. It is also a frozen wonderland, but it's like the frozen parrot. That's why Disney kind of looks the way it looks and stuff like that. And they always use like the blue fireworks and they try to make the castle look like a frozen type of castle. And they even talk about it in like Cinderella and like those type of movies and shit. Those fairy tale movies. I forget which ones. I don't, I don't remember, but I don't even know if I've even seen Cinderella or anything like that. But, um, but yeah, that's like that frozen wonderland and stuff like that where these pedos are <laughs> that's, that's, where, that's where they're kind of operating at but they're not even fully operating from there they're operating from they're they're, they're locked up they're on some other shit but yeah so anyways this is pretty much um heaven turned up on its head it says you build a house and then you come back and you have a squatter living in your house and not just like a squatter who just squatted and left and you didn't notice like a, you came back and your whole house was destroyed <laughs> you know what i'm saying after like a week it took you years to build it you lived in it for however long and then dude squatted in it for a week and somehow burned the house down you know what i'm saying that's that, that's what the situation is or froze the house and hit it with a hammer and it shattered or something, you know. Um, this is, um, this is if you had a clone and your clone just all of a sudden had mad diseases and stuff there, you know what I'm saying? You know how, like, you'll see in a lot of these movies and shows when people have clones, the clones have a ton of health problems. Yeah, the health problems. This is why they get those health problems. <laughs> um, this is like, this is the reason why it's called absolute zero on another level too is because this is absolutism. <laughs> this is thinking it's a one size shit fits all approach. This is thinking everything is absolute not even everything not objective or subjective not even objectivity i'm talking about absolute if you sneeze you're sick <laughs> if you um if if you uh like i don't know if you Um, trying to think of a few examples, not just one. If a person blinks four times, they are they 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 worship the devil. If a person <laughs> if a if a person makes one mistake they are bad if a person um does something that goes against not even what you think is right but like what you believe in 
what you believe in, not what you know, but what you believe in, they are of the devil. If a person, like, it, it, it's basically very bad math. Like, it's, it's very bad ways to calculate things. It's not actually direct calculations. It's like, it's like indirect calculations that are not even correct. It's like, if a person lies, they are evil. <laughs> but if a Christian person flew, he is a prophet. Or if, <laughs> if, uh, If a if a if a Christian person has a has a has a vision from God, it's prophetic. If a person who's not a Christian has um, has a vision, it is it's fortune telling <laughs> or it's uh, false prophecy. You know what I'm saying? Like it's these weird absolutes absolutes that it's not even real. <laughs> If you're not my religion, and I'm just going in on Christians because it's gonna, I don't know, but because just because sometimes when they get too harsh into that mentality, they be, they go crusading and they go witch hunting people. They're like, well, this person said this, so now he is of the devil. We must outcast him forever. If if this person doesn't believe in Christ, we will massacre their people. Like it's crusading shit. You know what I'm saying? It's oh. Like and the I think the thing that's the worst is the people who are, who put this mentality out because they know people are so easily mind controlled. I'm like, man, you're really on some archon shit. You're really just using people's fear to control them, to make people look at certain people certain types of ways, and just like that's some crazy shit. That's crazy as hell when people know what they're doing about that. That is so so messed up um basically when they point the finger at a witch and then they get them to kill the witch but then the person wasn't even a witch it was just something they a per a person they didn't like <laughs> it's so messed up <laughs> um yeah this absolutism it creates completely devoid natures so not void like in the part zero video but devoid people devoid of common sense people devoid of logic people devoid of proper emotions yeah you might be using emotions but you're de devoid of actually having real emotions people devoid of instinct people devoid of correct leadership skills people whose survival skills is based off of the judgment of something that they read in a book or something like that like People who are completely disconnected from just even nature in general, um, who make their conclusions based off of not experience, but fear. Like conclusions based off of not something where it's like, okay, well, I touched this fire, so I think it's hot. I think if you touch, like, see, it's something like this. I touch a fire, it burned me. Everybody should never touch fire in their lives because it burned me. And then you see another dude walking on fire. He's he's evil. <laughs> like, that's... He's absolute. Yeah, you can say, okay, the fire burnt me that one time. So there must be something that that dude is doing so that it doesn't hurt him or he's able to... Like, it doesn't... Somehow it's not hurting him. So instead of being able to question things and think and going inside of yourself and being like, hmm... Well, I wonder what he's doing that's making it so he can walk on the fire. Not being like, he's of the devil. That's what it is. No. What did he do? Because <laughs> I don't think he just prayed to the devil to be able to walk on the fire. <laughs> so I'm not mocking it saying, oh, the devil isn't real or any of that type of shit. I'm, mo what I'm, I'm not even mocking anything. I'm saying people just need to think about shit. And a lot of things, you will become a lot less afraid of a lot of things because it's not a lot of times it's not what you think why is it every time an angel shows up they say do not be afraid because it's not what you think <laughs> they're probably pretty scary looking you know what i'm saying they say do not be afraid it's probably pretty fucking scary looking so 
and things are not what you think. A lot of times, you gotta do very deep thought, very deep thought about things, and you have to experience something to actually know the truth. And then once you know the truth about something, then this is where you start to understand that abyss and that, that heaven aspect of things, you know what I'm saying? Because this is, look at it like this, right? And I'm not saying hell or anything is good, so I don't even get it like that, but so I don't get the shit twisted. I'm just making assumptions based off of what I'm saying. Just really think about what I'm saying. But here's another thing. Everyone who describes hell is not, 99% has not gone to hell. There might be a person who's like, when I died, I saw the afterlife and this is what I saw. So, I mean, there is that. But I guarantee you they did not just really quickly go to hell and then came back. A lot of people don't realize they probably there's that light that gold that light that people see when it's like that bright light right do you know how many things get projected to people in that light a lot of times it's an illusion and people see some illusion shit and then they come back and talk about it and people don't realize if you were aware of loose through lucid dreaming and astral projecting all that other shit if you were aware of the actual spiritual realm and you were actually spiritual because you went into the spiritual realm you could just not go to that light. Most of the things that people talk about are just projected to them from up. Like, how does a projector work? It's a bright light shining something on a, on like a surface. When people go into that light, their pineal gland, their third eye is being flooded with projections of things. And usually it's people taking advantage, or not people, but beings taking advantage of their fear and showing them things so that they make bad choices and based off of that bad choice they give their power over to some being that is usually looks like blonde hair blue eyed Jesus Asher Sheeran you know what I'm saying that fucked up Palladian so so no like you never will see a being from hell or and I'm not saying like just I'm not saying this is a good place or anything like that if you listen to the video I talked about the whole wicked stuff and all that I just that's so cliche like it's obvious like you should understand that I just don't feel like going into that because it's cliche and everyone's talked about it but you'll never see a being from hell describe hell Or a being really from heaven describe heaven either. Like you, like, how many people really can say that they've been to either of these locations and then they can describe what these things are? That's, so, at the very least, I'll, I'll explain what the concepts are much more correctly. So that people don't get confused with some other shit. But that glowing white light is not heaven and it's it's pretty it that glowing white light is kind of, is hell but it's not it doesn't look like usually what people see in that glowing white light whatever you see in that glowing white light is what you see <laughs> you know what i mean so it's it's just you're being this would be like if someone asked you to describe what a television is and you describe the television as a one single TV show, like you have a sick TV show called, um, I don't know, Bob, Bob the, I don't know, Dump Man, Bob, Bob the Garbage Man, and you describe the television as that TV show, Bob the Garbage Man. That is not what a television is. That is what you saw on the television. <laughs> that is not what a television is. That hell hell is not that like 
you're, you're, that is the channel you're tuning into because that is what you clicked on. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, and that's, that's and it's not like a TV where it, it's more like you are projecting that there. So it's, that's what's inside of you. That's all the things you're afraid of and the things that you still have to overcome. Or just let go of it and know how to actually w move in the spiritual realm. So this is what the Book of the Dead and a lot of those other books are for. The Book of Coming Forth by Day, the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Um, I forget what it is in the Bible, but there's something in the Bible for it too. Um, well, a huge portion of the Bible actually is for this. But... Um, that realm in between here and the waters or whatever that is a huge portion of the abyss so that is just like what i've been talking about in my staying the course and walking through the mist video the mist that that version of the darkness because it's not really the real darkness but the, the mist and that, that shadow realm and um because it's all the same thing in the abyss in that way first it's like purgatory shit but after that I'm talking about after that. That is just... That is not where... That, that, see, for yourself, it's just a way to refine yourself and for you to become complete. If you're talking about the actual objective, like, abyss realm, that actual objective realm that exists, that the chance of anyone actually going there, like, I know there's a bunch of people on the planet doing a bunch of crazy shit right now, but, and they might be infiltrated by certain beings that aren't even really from the abyss. They're probably from, like, purgatory or some other shit. That, your people are not really going to be interacting with the abyss like that unless they're on, like, an elite and they're doing some crazy, like, you're doing some crazy shit. I mean, like, super crazy shit so like I said it's not like you do bad things and then you now you become more complete I'm saying this is once you become accepting of your of the things that you've done wrong including people who think they're just good you will become complete and you you, you don't have to deal with all that shit that's down there but the people who are because it's all relative. The people who are doing super bad shit that are really far down there, they have their own shit that they got to deal with. You know what I'm saying? Like, they got their own things that they got to deal with. And whether or not they deal with that, that's on them. So, I'm just not going to get my energy mixed up with any of that at all. Because why would I get myself mixed up with any of that? Like, I, why would I want to tie my energy with any of the stuff that's going on over there in any kind of way? Like, that just doesn't, there's the stuff that you got to deal with because you have your own tree of life, your own tree of death. But the actual abyss, abyss, like, that's some shit that has nothing to do with, like, if you got some people on some crazy, not even, like, serial killer shit, I mean, like, like, cannibalism mad max type of crazy shit then why would you even tie yourself with any of that why don't you just let the demons do whatever they're going to do to themselves think that they're getting some form of heaven by doing whatever they're doing or if they're just not even thinking at all whatever but i mean if they're robbing, you know, like, and obviously I'm not just saying people who rob them, but like on top of that, they're obviously going to be doing things like robbing and other shit like that. But, um, and then they take whatever they're going to take. You should be somewhere way elsewhere because you're, there should be a giant gap between you and them, which is that two zeros I was talking about. There should be a giant gap between the, the two of you. You know what I'm saying? Like, Earth is splitting from 3 and 5D. Like, that whole thing that everybody talks about all the time. 
you should be way on the other side. <laughs> while, the, while they're splitting, there might be that overlap in the middle, but you should be on the side that doesn't overlap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, otherwise, um, unless you are you have a purpose, like that plumber, like you're trying to get people onto the other side or some. but the thing is, is like, unless you have a direct connection to that other side, like, I don't know if you're effectively sending people there. That's just the way I look at it. But anyways, I'm not going to, for myself, I just look at it as like, when I see people making mistakes and making fools of themselves and making crazy, because we're all going to do it to an extent. So we all do it somewhat. But um, but when I say when I when I see people making real big fools of themselves and really crashing, I'm like, damn, they must be going through some shit. Like, and to be honest, like, I, I instead of pointing a finger at them, I just I, I don't know. I, I, I just I I would more think I would want them to fix themselves. You know what I'm saying? I would want them to deal with whatever they're dealing with, and I'm not gonna be the one to just go try to run to that side and either point my finger at them or even try to directly. Um, pull them, you know, say, unless, like, there's someone um, real close to me, and I might give a certain chance or two out there, but, um, but that's about it, like, and very indirectly, but I'm definitely not going to be calling them out on, like, being, like, um, trying to put them down type of thing, so, because this is a, we're in a critical time right now, in a very critical time right now and um and just thinking that you follow this and that rule and you just are disciplined with this like discipline is very important so don't just lose discipline but just because you're like well i never did this i never did this i i made the, all the right choices doesn't mean you're even on the right side you know what i'm saying because um If it was as easy as I just follow this rule, I just follow that rule, right? Then demons would be able to make it look like that they do that, that they're following the rules and they'd be able to just type in the code and the gates go open for them to get into the the promised land. You know what I'm saying? It's not just that simple. Like there's the baptism by water. And that was basically baptism by fire radiation and shit so trial by fire everybody has to go through some shit and get tested and get purified like judgment it's all a test you know what I'm saying so that everyone is going through their own trial and everyone's trial is relative to where they're at you know you can call out the wicked principles and all the like the deep the, the deep stuff that's happening but as soon as you kind of just call out people individually, unless they directly did something to you that's harmful, which, I mean, if that's the case, then you got to deal with them directly. But we're in a safe way, right? But um, as soon as you kind of point people out like that, you kind of are taking away that person's ability to, to change and make a better decision. And who's to say that there isn't someone doing things better than you and they, they ain't going to call you out like in the same way um, in the same way because to them they might you might be just as bad as that person is to you you know what I'm saying so this is um, and it doesn't mean whatever people are doing aren't right but it's just uh, or I mean it doesn't mean what people are doing is right <laughs> but it um, not aren't right but it's right um, But again, it's about the whole change and the growth and just allowing people to have that space to to make mistakes and then and then become accountable for it. And it's not for you to be idealistic and hope that they do that. It's just to give them the space to do that and not to push them and challenge them to push them into a further wrong direction. You know what I'm saying? And it's not also to be there so that like, oh, when they make that mistake, you're like, oh, I understand. It's OK. You're forgiven. Like you don't you don't forgive people like that. Sometimes people cross lines for you, but just cut them off and leave, move on, and don't. Because anytime you uh, keep doing either way, if you're 
pointing fingers at them or trying to help them. You're caring about them in some kind of way and you're connected to them. So I would just try to, uh, I would keep my distance. You know what I'm saying? That's how I, that's how I move. And I think a lot of people can see that about me. Um, and if, if I'm, if I'm not talking to a person, it doesn't mean I'm keeping my distance from me, but I'm saying certain, certain situations, certain things, I'm definitely not the type to, um, just stay around it. Not because I'm running from her or because I'm scared of her or anything like that, but it's like, but it's like, if I'm standing with, <laughs> and this is not to be a harsh analogy for anybody, but just if I'm standing beside like a dumpster. I'm not going away from the dumpster because I'm scared of it or I don't want to fight the dumpster. It's just like, it smells like a dumpster. So I'm just, I, I don't like to hang out at dumpsters. You know what I'm saying? If another person likes to hang out at dumpsters and there's one behind my behind my house and people will go there and like smoke and shit like that. And it's kind of funny <laughs> now that I think about it. But people want to go hang out at the dumpster. I'm like, it's a weird place to even smoking shit. And it's like, it's a weird place to go do that. There's a park right over there. It's like walk for two minutes or <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. It's not about I'm better than you or I'm trying to help people because what you're doing is needs to be used as an example or it's not like um, <laughs> it's not like I, I don't think um, I think it, I'm afraid of you or any of that type of stuff. It's just like I'm moving in this direction. Another person might be moving in that direction. So for anyone else who's kind of dealing with that, well, I'm not dealing with that now at all, but I'm saying for anyone else who's dealt with that, um, I ain't going to push someone in the other direction and I ain't really going to, maybe one, two opportunities there, but I'm not going to really try to pull someone else in the other direction either. Like I might like a little bit here and there for certain people, but like once, once they keep showing certain patterns that they're obviously... You, you gotta just let people make their own choices. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. And that's how this, this thing works. It's, um, everybody's responsible for themselves. Everybody gotta, everybody can help each other. You know what I'm saying? As much as they can. But if a person doesn't want to be helped and, um, they want to make certain choices to, like, they really want to make certain choices, um, it's that cell division. You know what I'm saying? So, person might become an empty shell of what they were before and I mean it, they, can, they can be brought back later that's on them so yeah that's a like I said absolute zero it's a very cold bleak harsh stark thing and you don't have to become that to survive it. You have to go through the center of it to get out of it. And to go through the center of it is to find basically that one point where maybe one particle might have a moment to move. <laughs> and when it does move, you accelerate it and you bounce out of that thing or straight through the middle. Not through the not through the size of it, straight through the middle of it. 